All right, welcome back everyone. I'm sorry I wasn't here yesterday, but it's lovely to be back and see you all. And so let's begin uh, by going straight into the superpower state first. So take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open, whichever you prefer. And go into your superpower state. So either by repeating a word or phrase, or using your anchor, or by focusing on your subject and how much you love and appreciate them, the things that you love and appreciate about them. And feel your heart starting to open that expansion feeling in your chest. Very good. And allowing that light, that energy to shine out from your heart. Good job. And now allow that light or energy to spread down to your toes, up to the top of your head, and out to your fingertips. So you're now full of that light, that energy, that love. And allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. Love each cell just for existing. Good job. And now allow that light or energy to fill the little you, yourself as a child. Love that little you just for existing exactly as they are. And see that child being filled with that beautiful light, that energy, that love. And imagine that light or energy overflowing from that little you and filling your whole childhood, everyone and everything in it, every event, every circumstance, shining that light into any darkness there may be. This light shines so brightly. Feel the power of it. Good job. And now allow that light or energy to overflow from you and to fill everyone on the call today. Those who are on camera, those who are off camera. Love each one just for existing. Very good, good job. And you can open your eyes if you have them closed. And let's check in with everybody. So, Chris, you're first up on my screen. How are you today? Oh, good afternoon. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to be back. Yeah, we did. We it was a great session yesterday. Very useful. Good. Um, so I, I'm just doing a little bit of work with Steve and there's uh, not going there particularly, but I've come up with the something that really I hear and I know about myself. It's not fair. It's not fair. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, it's not. Yes, I know it well. <laughs> you know that? <laughs> we're very familiar. Oh. We're, we're very familiar. It's not fair. And me. <laughs> <laughs> I hadn't heard that one for a while, but it, as soon as I said it, I it but felt very yeah. sorry, love. But that's great. So when you when you haven't heard something for a while, you haven't come yeah. across or thought of it for a while, and then it comes up, it means you've uncovered. You you know your your stuff yeah. shifting around. So it's it's fantastic. And yeah. there are um, so so first of all, that it's not fair is natural and human. We are raised to believe that things should be fair, right? Because that's that's part of who we you know who we are as humans. If they have it, and we're taught, you must share. You know, if if you get it, then that one get you. Know, in various ways, each of us grows up 
or not everybody, but a lot of us, especially in our culture, grows up believing in fairness. And even that concept of fairness is warped in that you're at the same time as you're taught about fairness and you know if you've got something you must share it with everybody else and you know it's their turn now that kind of thing in the same uh, it, despite being taught that we are also taught to put others first which is definitely not fair <laughs> right that's that's a there's a contradiction there mm -hmm. and then the other um the other thing i wrote an article a little while ago it'll be on my medium account um steve perhaps we can put the link to that in the in the video description specifically about fairness and mm. i think it's a it's a it's a tricky one to grasp mm. but but i think it's powerful and because here's the thing we don't want it to be fair you don't want it to be mm. fair you want to have the advantage <laughs> right because if it's fair, then everybody's the same. We don't want that. You want to be fantastic. So, um, so addressing that, and then of course going to where in your childhood did you learn about fairness? And fairness comes from a feel uh, from a um, perception and belief of disempowerment. Yeah. I'm uh, a victim uh, in that everything I need has to come from outside of me. And and that is, you know, understandable because when you, you've got children, you know, as a child, everything does come from outside of you. And so children through their natural uh, survival instinct are checking what's that child getting that I'm not getting and, you know, what, who's getting something that I'm, I have to get to survive. So if you're feeding that one, you're not feeding me and I could die, right? So, mm -hmm. so that's where you want to go back to where you, number one, if you, you know, you've got memories of having siblings, you get everything. You get the, your first, you get the first choice of everything. You are served first. Your needs are met first and the others are all secondary. And then of course, in addition to that, you create um, separate memories, additional separate memories of um, you are the only child. So you get everything anyway. So there is no fairness. It's not about fair. It's about having everything. Yeah. Now, having said that, let me ask a little bit more. Um, what, uh, what context is this in? And you don't have to give details if you don't want to, but just like when you say it's not fair, what are you referring to? Sort of. Uh, I've got a bad knee and a bad wrist. <laughs> okay. And um, it's producing a lot of feelings, uh, uh, which I feel very strong about responding to. Yes. Nevertheless, uh, on a little bit of probing, so I worked with Steve yesterday uh, after the session. Um, I, I can hear, I can feel, I know that it, there is two sides. I'm, I'm being strong, but the other side is saying, but you know, you might be strong, but you know, it's really not fair, is it? <laughs> so I, I've got well, the two. <laughs> excellent. Okay. And so tell me why it's not fair. What's not fair about it? Uh, it makes me feel I'm getting old. Makes you feel um, you're getting old. Okay. And what's wrong with that? I won't be, uh, I don't. Oh, so many things. Yeah. <laughs> so many. I don't want to end up being like my mum, my auntie. Okay. And what would yeah. they... Well, so when you think I'm going to end up being like my mum and my auntie, what's wrong with that? Well, they became very physically very frail. Physically frail. And have you changed that? Not yet. Okay. Not That's yet. fantastic. That's I great news. That, that is great news because there you go. So there's one piece that you can do definitely. Make yeah. sure that they are the way you want to be now. Yeah. Now, however you want to be as, because there are, there are plenty of yeah. old people, who, much older than you, who are sprightly and healthy and not in pain and don't have issues, right? So it's, it's not a given. It's yeah. just something that's, that depends on the individual and the individual has choice, so even though sometimes it doesn't feel like it. So 
So I would say definitely, yeah, whatever you want to do now, be now, whatever you want to do now. So if there's a particular activity you love doing or you want to do, um, physically, how do you want to be? Emotionally, how do you want to be? And then make sure that they are the perfect role models, the perfect yeah. examples and the perfect role models. Does that sound good? Mm, yeah, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Good. And then, of course, practice it a lot. And then, whenever your wrist, you, your wrist and your knee, is knee. It, yep. Mm. Whenever your wrist and your knee bother you, refer immediately to those new memories of them. This is yeah. what we're doing now. We're not doing the other stuff anymore. This is the new destination. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so that's one piece of it. Uh, and then the not fair, well, wh why is it not fair? So that's what's wrong with getting older, but what's, mm. what's not fair about it? There's something, uh, also it makes me feel sorry for myself. Oh, and what's wrong the, with these? Well, well, the injuries, yeah, they make me feel sorry for myself. Um, but I want, I want sympathy and I want sympathy. I right. want you to feel sorry for me. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so sure. I'm yeah. What's wrong with what's wrong with getting sympathy? <laughs> well, nothing. No. Well, it was oh, Auntie Mary, another auntie. Uh, oh, stop! Stop uh, seeking attention. Very good. I'm, yes, I, yeah. seeking so attention. That's brilliant. That is perfect. And thank you, Chris, because that is a common thread with a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of us, again, in, you know, in the cultures that we grow up in. So in some cultures, you get, it, sympathy is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. But in, you know, in, for a lot of us, we grew up with exactly that. Ten, uh, not so much, it's, it's not just sympathy, it's attention. Yeah. And here's something to keep reminding yourself at least consciously of, and you can put it on a post-it if, if necessary, but it's something I learned a, a while ago, in fact, from my sister. Um, mm -hmm. and, and once you really ex uh, become aware of it and accept it and acknowledge it and, you know, allow it, attention is uh, essential to a child's yes. survival. There is nothing wrong with wanting attention. Every child mm -hmm. wants attention and they should want attention because that's how they survive. So, you know, that is a, a completely false program that is, that is created, um, you know, mm -hmm. that, that, that adults say, oh, stop looking for, she's just looking for attention. Well, if she's just looking for attention, give it to her, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's, so saying something like, oh, you're just looking for attention is like saying, oh, you just want to breathe. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you just, you just want food. Uh, yes. <laughs> so attention <laughs> deserves the same um, level of priority <laughs> as breathing, water, and food, and shelter, safety. It's one of the core essential mm. um, pieces of survival for a child because you know, evolutionarily, if they don't get attention, they're going to be left to die. So it's mm -hmm. built into us and it is crucial. So understanding that on a conscious level first, and then allowing yourself to change those memories to where it's the opposite. So Auntie Mary, instead of saying, you're just looking for attention, switching it to something like, oh, sweetheart, you need attention, don't you? We've been ignoring, we've been, we've been neglecting you a little bit there. Didn't mean to and making up for it. So that could be a stepping stone. And then to the point where you, you didn't need to ask for attention or try and get attention because you always got as much as you need. So if you feed someone and they're not hungry, then they're not going to ask for food unless they particularly like a specific thing that they're not hungry. But just talking about hunger now. Yes, but yeah. if you, you know, if somebody says, I'm hungry, can I have some food? Well, you, it's not surprising. <laughs> They're hungry. So hungry for attention. And, and that's so it's switching that perception from attention being a bad thing to, a, to attention being a crucial yes. thing. Does that help? Yeah. Yes, it does. It's, it's perfect. Thank you. Good. Thank you so much. Good. Yeah. Good. Because you may find that your wrist and your knee 
the pain may change or even go away altogether once you have fully absorbed and established that concept that you deserve mm. attention. Not only do you deserve attention, it's natural, it's normal, and you absolutely should have had it. You should have had your, mm. your attention, everything you needed. Mm. Make sense? Mm. Yeah. And another thing, and I'm saying this for others as well, yeah. attention could also, <clears throat> excuse me, be represented by money, uh -huh. um, relationships, experiences in relationships and other areas, physical stuff. Because if you didn't get attention as a child and you were taught you shouldn't want attention, oh, stop looking for attention, stop trying to get attention. If you are experiencing financial issues now, that may be the link. Mm. Because money could represent attention as a child. Stop trying to get, you, you shouldn't want it. You shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't, be asking for it so subconsciously obviously not to the conscious mind but the subconscious could be recreating that experience of you're just looking for attention and you shouldn't have it you know you shouldn't be looking for attention in the form of financial problems so thank you for bringing <laughs> that up chris because that may help others as well yay good for you well done <laughs> very exciting all right. Very good. And next up is Lisa. Hi, Lisa. How are you today on Tiara? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My chair is going crooked. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was oh, going to. He's got his on as well now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Almost forgot I... Tiara Tuesday. Okay. So this is. <laughs> this is part of the book that I'm doing. Uh, I drew. Um, can you see it okay? Oh, yes. And I, I got your text. I'm so sorry. I haven't had a chance to reply. Oh, yeah. The little aliens that, at, the, yes. at the book signing. Very good. <laughs> so it's so funny. It's so much fun to draw that. <laughs> so it, it'll be dedicated to all you guys. Ah, that's Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Everybody who listens and everything beyond. Yeah. Thank you. All the love in the world, you know. Um, so um, I... Uh, received an email from you guys and I wanted to know about the massive shift mindset more because it sounds oh. juicy and really good. <laughs> yeah, so what would you like to know? What, what, well, um, okay. So what was going on with uh, what you're going through and oh. um, what, what shifted because it, it was really cool. And, and whoever hadn't received that email, you know, it, I thought it was really important to know how much fun, you know. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, <clears throat> so what was going on was, what, what got me to that point is, as you know, we do these sessions, uh, we teach this work, and we also have started sharing the happy coffee, the happy beverages, all of which it could, you know, so anybody who's struggling in any way, the, especially the combination of the Remit method and the work we do here, and these videos are free, of course, these, these sessions are free, and these recordings are free. And the, uh, for those whose countries, uh, you know, where it's available, the happy coffee it, and, and happy tea and hot chocolate and lemonade and the peach tea and that, those are just just make it even easier the whole i mean it's just so it's like somebody saying i'm uh, you know i need something and there it is it's all there it's accessible and although this work takes a little bit of work certainly the the happy beverages take no work at all and you you can get the the, the boost and results so i was noticing a perplexity i was perplexed as to what was stopping pe what stops people who are suffering in whatever way so they've got emotional issues or uh, psychological issues or physical issues or financial or relationship issues however whatever challenges they have what's stopping them from just doing this from watching these videos and following along and if they're in you know one of the countries like america or australia or canada or new zealand What's stopping them from ordering those happy beverages, which have a money back guarantee, so there's not even any risk, and trying them? And either, you know, if it works for them, great. If it doesn't, that's fine. 
get the refund or whatever. So I was perplexed as to we're providing everything. We're enabling and empowering, but people aren't, you know, most people, the majority of people are not doing it. <laughs> Some of them say they will, and then they don't. And so my, my attitude up until then has been, well, people are cold and I'm just offering the coats. I'm saying just to let you know there are coats and this is how to get them and then respecting their decision whether to get it or not. And, but I was saying to Steve, you know, I don't understand why people aren't just doing it, getting it, you know, especially when it's so easy <laughs> and doesn't cost money. What's stopping them? Uh, you know, there are, the coats are there. So why are they still insisting on being cold? And that's when Steve said to me, maybe it's not about the coats. And I was like, but then what, then what is it about? I don't, I, you know, my brain couldn't find anything. And when Steve said, maybe it's not about the cold, giving the cold people coats or telling them they where the coats are. Maybe it's about having a, a lovely, beautiful shop. So maybe it's not about the cold and the coats. Maybe it's we've got a, a beautiful shop on a beachfront uh, with ice cream and cocktails and, you know, or cold drinks and um, whatever else he said, you know. So it's fun, wonderful stuff rather than survival stuff. And that really, sh that, the penny dropped for me because I thought, ah, maybe we've been going, maybe our approach has not been, uh, you know, the best one for what we want to achieve. In other words, we want to help people to live their best life who are willing to live their best life and want to. And we've been trying to drag the ones out of the, you know, the ones who are suffering to try and get them to not suffer. And so this shifted me even further to yesterday, actually. So this I haven't even written about yet. I, and I will write about it, I realized that people who, and this is for all of us, people in our lives who we see they're struggling or they're suffering or they're whatever they're doing, and we feel like we have an answer. If you just do this, you'd be happier, you'd be wealthier, you'd be healthier. Your relationship would be better if you could just do this. Those people are like pieces of scenery along the journey to where we're going, and we don't need to animate them. If they want to stay where they are, we can respect and love them where they are and just keep moving forward. And those who are, anim are already animated will get on the train or the, get in the car or whatever, however, whatever um, analogy we put with that. They'll get on board, but we don't need to try and convince. And for me, my brain made a shift because my approach has always been trying to get through to the people who aren't seeing it, who haven't grasped that they have the power, whatever that is. I've been trying to help them. And I, what I realized was the link to my childhood where there, was so, there were arguments all the time. Everybody was always arguing. And there were misunderstandings, incredible misunderstandings. I could see them and I was constantly trying to make everybody feel better and trying to explain the misunderstandings. And of course, I was only a child, so nobody listened to me, but that was my driver. And so I made that shift in gears from trying to fix or trying to help, trying to make people okay to come in, the water's lovely. So hopefully that answer, it was a long explanation, but hopefully that gave you a little bit. So was there anything you wanted clarification on? Or? Well, that, that was beautifully enriching. And I love how compassionate you are for all human beings on this planet. It really is amazing to me. And that how you helped everybody so much. And I love you. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Lisa. And I love you too. And, and the same to you with your books and just the way you share here and the, the light that you bring. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you. All right. So next up on my screen, screen, <laughs> next up on my screen, Katrina. Hi, Katrina. Hi, Odell. <clears throat> How are you today? Yes, I'm here, Odell. That's good. Good. Very good. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> it's mm. lovely to see you. <clears throat> Any questions? Thank you. Um, I was working on um, 
Well, as usual, it gets really good. It's like the roller coaster. Yes. But it never stays. Never st so it can be quite, um, what's the word? It pulls you down each time. You see other people doing nothing, but they're getting on with their lives and they're very happy. Uh huh. And I'm working very hard and I'm not getting anywhere. Oh, well, oh yes. That's not no. true either. Yeah. But I want to, um, something that happened to me yesterday. Yes. Was I was out um, shopping and a lady offered to pay for my coffee. Huh. The restaurant wasn't taking cash. And right. I said, oh, and she says, no, but she said, if you haven't got your card, I will pay or something like that. And I said, oh, no, 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 thank you. I have my card. So um, my money background was really triggered. Oh. Yeah. So I didn't. So this is working along with Steve. Yesterday's um, video, he was working along with... Um, a new girl, I haven't seen her before, but I was filling in. Yes. So this is what has come up and I don't know whether it's, it's ready to change. So here we go. It was, um, the thing made me feel very um, insecure. I was very uncomfortable. Um, people think you have money, but you have not. Worst part of my money situation is I don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. And then I came to um, heard parents talking about others who had no money and would not like to be them. And they looked down on them. And this sort of made me feel bad, even though I have, that's what I come up with. So I heard it maybe as a child or something. Yes. Okay. Oh, good. There you so, go. <laughs> Very good. So thank you for bringing this up because again, you know, you're not alone. This is a this is a common thing. So let's look at your earliest memory of finding out about money. Can you remember? And it may not be the earliest incident, but the earliest uh, thing you can you can remember anything to do with money at all. Your first awareness that money exists. Money is a thing. Anything the first thing that comes up, even if it doesn't seem to be um, relevant. And if you can't think of anything, that's also okay. I thought of um, a memory that I have worked on, but anyway, I was in the, um, the parish hall and there was like a bazaar, yes. you know, church fund thing. And um, there was, you had to put your money on the, a square or your... Yes. You know that you spin something and then so my money was say on the red yes and i moved it to the black or whatever everybody else was winning and i wasn't getting anything and then i thought right i'm going to maybe as i seen it was going to stop it was going to go to the, i don't know but anyway i moved the dice moved whatever yeah and uh, but a neighbor somebody was watching me and i did win ah uh -huh. and so and what was wrong with that? What happened? Oh, I just couldn't look that guy in the face ever again. And I always was so embarrassed and ashamed. That makes perfect sense. Do you see the link there? And do you see the link to what you said at the beginning of now, the, this, this session, where you said it's other people aren't doing anything and they're winning uh, or they're, they're getting things. And I am working so hard and I'm not. Do you see that there? that moment when you were, I'm assuming it was roulette, it sounds like roulette, where okay. you put every, the others were winning and you weren't. And then when you finally did win, it was, it, it was accompanied by shame and not nice feelings. So stress chemicals. So now okay. in your life, that's the norm. You're watching other people winning at roulette and you're not. And the idea of winning, if you win, you're going to have those stress chemicals in your system and there's shame and whatever else was there, whatever other uh, emotions were there. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So the first step is, can you see the link there? Well, I need to listen again, but yes, okay. I know I will get it. Yes. Even though okay. not all right. So, so the, the so the reason I'm saying do you see the link is so that you know. Uh, so, so just to clarify, what we're going to change now 
is you want to change that to the stepping stone is that uh, you moved the black, but it was in plenty of time and there was no problem. Everybody was looking and they, then they went, oh, wow, you did that just in time. Isn't that amazing? You must have had some kind of sixth sense there. How did you know to move it? You are just instinct. I just felt like an impulse and I just did it because that's the way I roll <laughs> or whatever, right? So oh, that, I had time to move it. Oh, yes. Yes. So you had time. You moved it in time. So whatever the cutoff point was, you did it before that. You moved it before that. All right. And yes. then one and that just that was momentum. Then once you won that, it just picked up momentum and you kept winning. OK, that's stepping stone. You practice that three times. The final memory is that you are the one who's winning all the time and others are not. Sometimes they win, sometimes they don't, but you are consistently winning and they say about you what you've been saying, which is how come it's so easy for them? They get it and I have to work so hard and they are saying that about you now in a nice way. But Katrina, you're so lucky. How come you don't even have to think? You just put, you, you put it wherever you put it, it happens. It's so easy for you. I wish I could be like that. I wish it was so easy for me. How do you do that? And you go, I don't know. It just comes naturally, I guess. How does that feel, to, the idea of doing that? Any, any resistance, any objections? Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear you about that. <laughs> <That's not laughs> <bad. laughs> good. The reason that's good is because it's probably going to be the thing that makes a big change. So whenever you have any kind of resistance or objections, it means you're on the right track. And this is probably going to create core changes. It's the same as resistance in weightlifting. The heavier the weight, the stronger your muscles are going to get as long as you keep doing it, as long as you keep, you know, move forward. The running any kind of physical activity, the, the more resistance, the more pain, the more, you know, difficult, whatever, the more you're leveling up. You're leveling up that strength, that stamina, that skill, whatever it is, this is the same. So when you feel that resistance or that objection or those thoughts come, yeah, right. Then you know you're on the right track and you're okay, <laughs> nice try, but we're gonna do it anyway. Right, so see those, yeah. see those thoughts, uh, those, those resistance and the thing and those thoughts that come up, yeah, right, or whatever it is, see that as a sign, say a sign along the roadside that says, welcome to, wherever your destination is, wherever you want to get to. Another quick little thought that I would add in there, along with the, the, the resistance, you may also want to take a look at the feelings that that little Katrina is having back at the roulette table. The shame, the guilt, and take one step back from that and be just allow those feelings to be there as well. So send some unconditional love Mm -hmm. to those feelings, to that little you. So starting from that, from that point and giving her love because there's still that, that uh, shame ridden, guilt ridden, hurt little Katrina that's back there at that, that table. And you can step back from that. And I, and I liked uh, Odile and I had a conversation earlier this morning and she used uh, the phrase, you can take the costume of that old feeling off and take one step back from that and just be able to step into your true nature and see, see the guilt, see the shame, see whatever is there as just that little, that aspect of the little you. So you are not the shame. You are not the guilt. It just happened. It was back there. So you're turning into it with that, that level of unconditional love and acceptance and starting from that point. I don't know if that, if that helps a little bit. So add yeah. that too. Okay. Thanks a million. Okay. Very good. Thank you for sharing that, Steve. Yes. I, I second that a uh, very good place to start with those feelings. So thank you, Steve. So I'm really grateful to say and thank you to the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if I had if I had taken the coffee, yes, then this wouldn't have happened. 
Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yes. It depends. So, it, it, so you know, the, the, the combination of things is different for different people. So if you, you know, if you had, then you would have perhaps found it in a different way. But if you hadn't, then as we see, you find it. Okay. All right. Very good, Katrina. Thank you for sharing that. I'm yes. so glad I came on because I wasn't going to. Oh, I'm so glad you did as well. Mm -hmm. And so for you and for everyone else, remember this. The next time you feel like you, sh you know, you're not sure you'll go on. Remember this moment. Bookmark it for, for future. Good job. Thank you, Thank Katrina. You. Thank you. You're very welcome, sweetheart. And Swasti. Hi, Swasti. How are you today? Hello. I'm good. Thank you. Good. Nice to have you back. <laughs> yeah, it's nice to be um, back. Thank you. Um, so the, uh, the new exercise that Steve's introduced. Um, so I tried that this morning. Like we were just discussing, I had some resistance to it because, yeah, it's going to be powerful. Yeah. Um, but I had a question on that, um, just quickly. So when I did it, it took, so the entity by itself, like its own existence, um, it took form of my little brother who's five years old um, because he's always like roaming around the house. He, he's free everywhere. But he also cries when he wants something. Right. Um, so I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, or like how to interpret or how to fix it if it's a bad thing. Okay, all right. So um, I'm going to say a little bit of what I think and then I'm going to hand it over to Steve so he can answer that because this new technique is, um, he, he's more familiar with it because he's kind of uh, introduced it. So um, my view on that would be that whatever your little brother um, represents, so you would love whatever that is. So you'd step back from it. Using that technique, you'd step back from, from it and then just accept it. So if it's your little brother and it's crying, doesn't matter where, in other words, to answer the question, you don't know whether it's good or not. It doesn't matter whether it's good or not. There's no such thing. You're going to love it exactly mm -hmm. as it is, whether it, you know, so there is no good or bad. And then the second part of that, I would say is, so your brother is five, so you were 15 when he was born? No, you He's were- He's five now. You're, you were 13 when he was born. Oh, no. He's like five right now. Yes. And I'm 18. That's right. So when he was born, you were... Oh, yeah, sorry. That's yeah, okay. yeah. So you were 13. What was happening mm -hmm. in your life at 13? Or how was it when he was born? What was your experience of that? Oh, I was not happy that he was going to be born because, um, well, my grandparents wanted a boy. So <laughs> it was not even, it wasn't like, it, was, it wasn't that choice, basically. Yes. Um, yeah. Did you say you weren't happy that he was going to be born? Or you weren't? Yeah. You weren't no, I wasn't. Right. I thought so. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> right. So, so that is now that's, so he's representing this feeling. So because he, that, that is what he was represents when he was born. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see that? Yeah, I see that. Good job. Okay. So you want to go back and change that when he was born and uh, number one. And before that, even what, so when he, you, you say you weren't happy when he was born, what was, what was the feeling? So when you say no, you weren't happy, what were you feeling? Um, I felt like I wasn't enough because they wanted a boy and like me and my sister weren't enough together. There you go. So you take that. So that feeling of not being enough and earlier memories and change those to the opposite positive empowering so that you are all they need. Nobody needs anything else except you, right? Okay. And make sure that that's strong. Then you come forward and change the other memories. Does that okay. make sense? So then when yeah. he was born, you change that to perhaps you could do a stepping stone to where um, he was born and they're saying, ah, oh, it's a shame it's a boy. We were hoping for another girl. Okay something like that and then you change it to uh, perhaps and then depending on what feels best and you can remember you can do lots of different ones they don't have to make sense they don't have to um be the same uh be on the same page they can contradict each other it's just separate bits of, of information perhaps he was never born perhaps mm -hmm. i mean you know perhaps the, the you were always an only child so mm -hmm. whatever that is but change those earlier bits first those okay. stepping stones as well 
Does that sound good? Yeah, thank you. Good job, you're very welcome. Um, and also like, what do you do? So I do this with stress because Steve said this, obviously the stress has been with me ever since school started, ever right. since I was like three or four. Um, so what this feeling is definitely like, definitely um, dimmed down now. Like when I did the exercise, I felt really good. Um, what do you do when this feeling comes back throughout the day? Do you just keep sending love to it? Yes. So it's keep sending love to it. And, um, you know, in that technique that Steve Gay did the, uh, a few episodes ago with Sue, where you let the, you, you allow the feeling to go and live somewhere else so mm -hmm. that it's not in you. It goes and it lives in its own little town with its friends, with all the other feelings that are the same <laughs> or whatever. Then what you do is when it comes up, send love to it and remember it's not here. Oh yeah, it's living in the wherever mm -hmm. it is, the cat basket or the you know the thing in the garden or the beachside town, whatever it is. Okay, so if it likes to roam around, then should I still give it a home or should I let it roam around? I would. I mean, I'll let Steve answer. That. Yeah, I'll jump in with that. I think that if you can um, be in a place of acceptance with that, mm -hmm. and have a conversation with it. And I know that that all may sound a little bit crazy, <laughs> but it's all work that's happening in your mind anyway. So just yeah. be creative with it. And if, if you can imagine that conversation, where would it want to be? What feels like a safe place for it to be? What would it like to do? So again, okay. allowing yourself to stay in that place of unconditional love allows you to be in a place of power and mastery and not you know not getting um not getting caught up in the in that old feeling where you feel like you're confused or uh whatever so just just stand just stand in your place of calm and say where would you like to be and it, and wait for an answer not in if there's an answer that comes that's fine if not then just give it that, that sense of acceptance. The more that you can step, step back and just accept whatever's happening in the moment, mm -hmm. the more that empowers you and the more that it, it brings down the emotion, whatever that emotion is in the moment. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. Thank and and I, I'd like to add to that just something that stood out for me is when you said, what if it wants to roam about, which is what you said about your brother, that he yeah. did has the run of the place and he goes wherever. So there's a there's definitely a connection there as well. Okay. Yeah, so um, is that a good thing? If it wants to roam around like my brother? So uh, I would, I, I don't, it's neither good nor bad. It's just okay. a representation. Okay. So I would go with what Steve has said. You know, yeah. you may need to watch this, uh, the recording. Yeah, I think I blanked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's fine, that's natural. Um, and so do what he suggested and then also go and change the memories of your brother. Okay, yeah. All right, sounds okay. good. Yeah. And, good and if, I, I also want to add just a little bit, uh, like, you know, with, with Katrina, go back and go back to the feelings of what was there when you were 13 years old, when your brother was born, mm -hmm. and be in that place of acceptance. And again, um, uh, give some attention to some acceptance of the feelings that's there for the little you. Mm -hmm. So in a way, you're giving voice to that little you, the feelings that were there when you were 13 years old. So yes, go mm -hmm. through the process of doing the stepping stone memories and changing all of that, mm -hmm. but start from the place of accepting, acknowledging, hearing that little you. Okay. Agreed. So doing this exercise as a thirteen-year-old in that moment, okay, yeah, yeah, give yeah. give that a give that a start there. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Good job. All right, good job, Swasti. Well done. Yeah. All right, and Steve, will you send me the targets? And let's go and let's do that. Oh, um. I really get this idea. What if because of the patterns and programs my daughters have inherited from me make them somewhat resistant to my personal journey? I'm sure uh, others here have 
a similar experience. Uh, yeah, absolutely, that's very possible. Um, and the answer is, like with everything else, uh, is not to be focused on them, but focused on yourself and perhaps where you've been resistant. So, um, you know, so if you take, you know, take your attention onto where you've been resistant or where you learned to be resistant, where your parents were resistant to progress or changes or, um, you know, anything like that, uh, perhaps resist parents resistant to personal development or and i don't know but anything like that change that and whenever you see something in someone outside of you always look inside for the you've got the remote control inside you and as you change this that will change one way or another your experience of them or it will change all right. So because if somebody's resistant to your own personal journey, that shouldn't make any difference to you because your own personal journey is happening inside you and they don't even need to know about it. Does that make sense? So somebody is resistant. So how is that resistance showing up? Perhaps they are, you know, dismissing it or not taking it seriously when you talk about it, or they're um, criticizing or judging something you're doing. And the answer to that is they're reacting to their TV screen that they're watching. It's got absolutely nothing to do with yours. You are controlling your own experience and your own what you're doing inside yourself. And you don't need their cooperation and you don't need their, uh, you don't need their um, approval. You just do it inside yourself. You want to feel good, you feel good. Does that, I'm going to unmute you so that I can just get a little bit more uh, in case that's, in case there's something else needed there. No, it, it, does it help? it's exactly that. And I, it's so, thank you, I do, it does. And that's exactly how I've been uh, working oh. with it. Yeah. Well, but thank you. I want to hear you. It's good. It's always good to hear you say it. Thank you for bringing it up. And and so yeah. what you do though in those moments. So when that comes up, you can turn your focus inside, get into that state, and then love them exactly as they are. Love the fact that they're resisting your personal journey. Love that. Shine light at all of it. So them resisting is darkness. Shine light into it. Make sense. Yeah. I know it sounds simplistic <laughs> and easier than perhaps it is like, at the moment. I like that. <laughs> but that's what you're aiming for. All right? Yeah. Thank Good you. job, uh, Chris. So, so, yeah, so that's empowerment. All righty, let's go into the targeting. So take a deep breath and either close your eyes or leave them open, whichever you prefer. And go into your superpower state, however you normally do that. Very good. And feel your heart opening, your chest expanding as that light shines out from your heart. Very good. And allow that light or energy to spread down to your toes, up to the top of your, your head and out to your fingertips. So you're full of that light, that energy, that love. Good job. And now allow that light or energy to fill each of the 50 trillion cells that make up your body. So you're full of, each cell is full of that light, that energy, love each cell just for existing. And now allow that light, that energy to fill your subject. Focusing on everything you love and appreciate about that subject. And then imagine that your subject either doesn't want to be with you or that they don't have the qualities that you love and appreciate and keep them filled with that light, that energy, that love anyway. Very good. And now let's go to Chris. Fill Chris with that light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Chris 
just for existing. Very good. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Chris and fill her three daughters with that same light, that energy, loving each one just for existing, no matter what. So whether they benefit from, the, from uh, Chris's development or not, whether they accept it or not, whether they resist it or not, no matter what they do, what they think, what they experience, keeping them filled with that light, that energy anyway, without any need for them to change. Shining that light into any darkness, exactly as it is. Very, very good. Good job. And now over to Lisa. Fill Lisa with that same light, that energy, from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love, Lisa, just for existing. Very good. Good job. And now over to Swasti. Fill Swasti with that light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love Swasti just for existing. Good job. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Swasti and fill the results and preparation of her IQ exam. So however that goes, however the preparation goes, whatever the results are, loving it all exactly as it is without needing it to change, without needing it to be a specific way. However it turns out, shining that light into any darkness and loving it all exactly as it is without needing it to be different. So imagining the worst case scenario and filling that with this light, this energy, this love, loving it exactly as it is, shining that light into the darkness. Keeping Swasti filled with that beautiful light, that energy, that love, no matter what, no matter what she achieves or doesn't achieve. Good job. And now to Katrina, fill Katrina with that same light, that energy from the tips of her toes to the top of her head and out to her fingertips. Love, Katrina, just for existing. And allow that light, that energy to overflow from Katrina and fill everything and everyone her life, no matter what, all the events, all the circumstances, all the people all the experiences with the same light, this energy, this love, exactly as they are, without needing them to change, shining that light into any darkness. Very, very good. And now allowing that light, that energy to fill everyone who's off camera today, who's on this call and off camera today, and everyone who's watching the recording. Fill all of them with the same light, this energy, this love, exactly as they are, no matter what, and loving them just for existing. Feeling that connection, feeling that power, and shining this powerful light into all darkness. Very, very good. And allowing that light, that energy to fill yourself later today. So thinking of you later today, whatever you'll be doing or experiencing or feeling, fill that version of you with that same light, that energy, that love, no matter what. Whether you do what you want to do or you don't, doesn't matter. Whether you fall off the, the superpower wagon or not, love that version of you anyway, exactly as you are. 
and now allowing that light that energy to fill a target so pick a target someone or something that triggers you in your life or in the world and fill that target with the same light this energy this love shining the light into the darkness loving it exactly as it is that's your power very good job and allowing yourself to receive the love, the light, the energy from everyone else, including me, filling you up with that light, that energy, that power, loving you exactly as you are, no matter what. There is nothing you could do or be or feel or think that would change that love for you. just for existing. Very good. You could open your eyes if you haven't closed. And any questions or comments before we leave? And we will see you again tomorrow morning, same time, same place, or afternoon, where, depending on where you are, <laughs> same time, same place. Um, lots of love to all of you. Keep practicing, of course. Keep, um, uh, keep coming back every day and well done for um you know for all the progress you're making and you're very very welcome thank you for all the lovely messages all right then bye bye everybody